we are here at about um, 1900 meters from the start of the the trail from the entrance so this is what we call far a or just for simplicity d trail d segment d and uh, here we still have a good amount of native overstory that's uh, fairly high. So for example, right here we have a, a relatively large Nuttles Oak. We have a lot of oak in this section of the forest. Now again, this whole area has been damaged, has been impacted by the storm, was impacted by the storm. And so we're still missing a lot of canopy. This should be much darker, much more closed um, in terms of the overstory. Uh, but nevertheless, we still have a lot of trees that persisted. A lot of them did not get knocked down as as more on the edge of the property uh, happened, as happened over there. Um, so, but even here, you still see this phenomenon of this ongoing cascade effect of Hurricane Katrina on our bottomland hardwood forest. So you can see we have this, you know, still some cypress here, but they're they're leaning. They're not particularly straight up and down as we walk past some of our monitoring transects here. And so here's a great example where we have, uh, we have these cypress trees that are leaning, right? So this guy is falling to this guy, this guy is falling into this guy, and they are hurting. You can also see, if we go down low and look in their, look in their roots, this, sh we should not see this. This should be, um, you know, soil should be basically up to here. So what we're seeing is the effect of subsidence, compaction, the effect of altered hydrological regimes on this soil, on these sediments. So what's happening is the soil is compacting and going down. And originally we had soil probably up about here, up to where this guy bend, bent. And so, you know, we've lost, you know, on the order of uh, three quarters of a meter or so here in terms of elevation. And that obviously makes these these really fantastic buttressy roots, which are an amazing evolutionary invention, um, they don't work as well when, when they start anchored and then they get removed from that anchoring. So as you walk underneath this, this cypress here, you can see that this guy's been down for so long. Now some of these guys, like this tree, it fell a long time ago, or, or it, it, it leaned a long, long time ago. So much so that these side uh, these side branches have essentially become main trunks and they're growing straight up. They're going straight to the light. So this is creating a nice shaded area underneath here. And as we continue to walk down the trail, we see again um, more persisting natives in this segment of our forest. And so we see a lot more lateral growth, a lot more lateral leaves in this region, whereas back near the entrance, mostly we were seeing um, uh, the, the weedier species, the red maples of the forest and the more common invaders like tallow, etc., cetera, uh, shooting up and um, mostly having their leaves on the top of the tree because they're new growth. Here at, uh, this is, this is uh, D2000 or FAR A2000, we do see a lot of side growth on these remnant trees like this Nuttles Oak right here. So stress forest, there's a cool caterpillar. Can you guys see that? I don't know how much you can get zoomed in on there, but a cool caterpillar on that Nettles Oak. A lot of really cool insect associations, a lot of cool animal associations. So when we work on conserving this forest, conserving these important plants to start with, we have a cascade of all kinds of other critters that come along with this. We have insects, we have mammals, we have birds, and on top of all that, we have all the wonderful ecosystem services. So this part of the forest is giving us a much healthier uh, function. We're, we're doing much more what this system historically has done than in our more degraded, invaded, uh, damaged parts of the forest. So our goals have way more of this, much less of the stressed system.